What's going on guys? So I am out here at the 2024 Houston RV show and I'm actually backed up into another RV because this one next to me is so long that I can't fit it in the frame by just backing up enough. So we're going to take a look at this really cool Wildwood Heritage Glen and see what it's all about. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So let's look at the numbers. We're not gonna spend as much time on the outside, mainly because it's very difficult to get around some of these units. So this is gonna have a 9,776 pound dry weight. It's gonna be almost 39 feet long, a cargo capacity of 1,586 pounds. This is definitely what I would consider to be three quarter ton towable and up. I would not put this behind a half ton truck, mainly because you're talking about something that's nearly 40 feet long. You tow this behind a half ton truck, all of this leverage is gonna be pushing against the back of your truck. You're not gonna have the payload capacity to properly handle that type of weight, even if you have the towing capacity, especially once you load your truck up. It's just, it's common sense, just don't do it. It's gonna put you and your family in a very white knuckled precarious position. I would not tow this behind a half ton truck. Three quarter ton truck at minimum, preferably even like a one ton. If you had a dually, that's gonna give you the side to side stability that you might want to help control the sway that this might encounter if you're going through heavy winds. But I just wanted to lead with that. But Wildwood and Heritage Glen, they've been doing a lot of really, really amazing things with their RVs that absolutely elevate them to the next level. And we're gonna see some of that when we go through here. This specific unit has a show price of 51,995. Now, if that price wasn't there and all you saw was 74,103, so many of you would be screaming in the comments section, not worth it, not worth $74,000. It's not $74,000. All of these are discounted even at the dealership lot. It's not just the show price. You'll be able to go to a dealership lot and get a huge discount off of that 74 grand. Don't know if it's gonna be quite as aggressive as the show price, but still, $51,000, $52,000. I think most people would agree that's a pretty fair price for what you're getting here, especially considering how it's constructed and what goes along with it. That said, let's hop inside this unit and see what it's all about. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the back suspension. I don't wanna spend too much time outside because it is really loud out here. It has a steel spread axle, so they're spread apart about 15 to 16 inches. Goodyear Endurance tires, I definitely like that. This rides on a BAL Huck bolted frame, so it's not your traditional Lippert frame. And it is a pretty dang large frame. That's a 12 inch, it's more of like a C channel frame with them versus an I beam frame. But that's a pretty nice frame structure, honestly. You have the squared off windows, so not your traditional like oval shaped windows like you see on some of them. But that looks really cool. That's kind of the new thing. And with these windows, you actually have a really great inside area where you don't have to have those large bulky valances. You have a nice outside kitchen and this is absolutely an outside kitchen because they're giving you a sink. Not just a sink, they're giving you a griddle as well as a compact refrigerator and lots of storage and a nice thick door up here to protect you from the elements in the sun whenever you're cooking. That is really nice, I like that. That is a true kitchen on an RV. All right, let's hop inside. Before we do, let's see what's going on here. 200 watt solar package, has a 200 watt panel up top, 30 amp solar charge controller, two 15K air conditioning systems. There we go. And then over here, they just talk about some of the things that they do. The wide stance axle is basically supposed to reduce what's called porpoising, that whole feeling of this when you go over bumps. I don't know if it really helps that much. Otherwise, I think all manufacturers would be doing it, but a lot of people kind of hang their hat on that being a really, really good thing. You're gonna have this really cool tilting bed system. I sometimes forget to go over that, so I'm glad I read this so you can see it. A 60K on-demand tankless water heater. That is really cool. That's much larger than you typically see. One piece fiberglass roof, check that out. That right there is game changing. When I say game changing, to have a one piece solid fiberglass roof going across the top, that is freaking awesome. I don't necessarily know if it's like a hard fiberglass or if it's kind of like a kind of like a turf material or rubber material. It does feel like a hard material. That is really, really cool. So yeah, you guys, have a fiberglass roof on top of this. That's something people have been asking for for a long time. And when you look at the prices of these units, you're not paying DRV pricing. Anyways, let's step inside of this 310 BHI. Carpet free RV. You got your controls right here. On demand tankless water heater settings. So check this out. This is actually a really nice interior. They've set this up really well. You have your cornered TV on a bracket where you can rotate it. You have your sound bar, 
nice storage spot right here. I'd probably try to fit a coffee maker in there, honestly. This is really cool, kind of a reflective front end to this panoramic fireplace. You have your theater seating right across from it. This has the blinds that only go down. So these are blackout blinds, but they don't have the shade that comes up from the bottom. But that is really nice to have blackout blinds. And you can see you don't have those huge valances that stick off of them either. This is really nice. Again, your theater seating and part of your dinette will face your TV, which is nice. You have an island in the center. All of this stuff is thermofoil. It's not solid surface, which means you just have to be careful. If water's running down over the edge, get it wiped up as soon as possible. The minute you scratch through this, you will see a little puffiness of the wood underneath this. It holds up well if you don't abuse it or if you don't have accidents that mar into this. Okay, your kitchen area. A lot of prep space over here. I feel as if they could have shifted the stove over about five inches. You would have still had a lot of prep space over here, but you would have gotten a lot more on this side as well. And it would have given you kind of that separation from this wall. You have your Furion vent hood, which means on the outside, you need to open up the flaps on the vent. Otherwise, if you use this, it's just gonna throw the air back inside if you don't. You have a compact Furion microwave. You have some cabinetry down here. Extra storage there, more cabinetry here. I like the fact that they give you three drawers. It would have been nice to have a thinner, like a utensil drawer, and then the larger drawers beneath it, maybe a pots and pan drawer on the bottom. Uh, but at least they give you some drawers in the kitchen. I don't think it's a true kitchen unless you have drawers. Over here, you have kind of a walk-in pantry with motion detection light and a hanging hooks, or hanging hooks, multiple hanging hooks in here, and a small window. This is kind of cool, this is creative, right? I do wish with a pantry this large, they would have gotten a little more creative with the shelving because right now they're spaced so far apart that if you have a lot of stuff and you wanna kind of separate it, you can't really do that. I would have sacrificed the window in here. I would have put a way to adjust your shelves and just put a bunch of shelves inside of here that would have given you the ability to move them around the way you want and configure this how you want for the stuff you have. That's just me though. What do you guys think about that? I always bring that up, and I always wonder what people think about that. Got a lot of storage here. Actually, power, coffee maker. That's where the coffee maker goes. Got more storage underneath. Got more storage above. Booth-style dinette with more storage here. This also turns into a bed, but you may never need to turn that into a bed because of what's back here. You have this huge bunkhouse. And there's a slide out in here as well. So you have the top bunkhouse, which tilts up. You have this, which turns into like this huge futon down here for the kids just to have a ton of fun on. You have lighting back here. I love these dark batten strips that are much more significant than you typically see in most RVs. Then you have a, then you have a spot for a TV right here. You have more storage right there. You have some drawers under here and another bunk above. So back here, you could feasibly sleep a lot of kids, depending on how you have them arranged. You could absolutely sleep a lot of kids back here. What do you guys think of that? Then quickly, we're gonna work our way to the front of this unit. Stopping at the bathroom first. Good size bathroom, good size shower. This unit is almost screaming for a half bath, to be honest with you. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Good size sink in here. Huge medicine cabinet, very, very deep. And then you have more storage right here. So even more medicine cabinet space, a lot of it. You got a lot of kids, you might need that. Here's your toilet paper roll, which honestly is kind of far away from where you might be sitting. It probably would have been better like right there, or maybe even on the door. All right, working our way here, you have your queen size bed on the tilting mechanism. So that is cool, you can tilt it up. If you have your TV here on a bracket facing them, just really, really easy to see, I like that. You have two AC units in here as well. I almost feel as if three would have been a cool option just to have one for the bunkhouse. You have lots of storage here, extra drawers. You're gonna have to crawl onto the end of the bed really to get on because you don't have the ability to walk through here, mainly because there's gonna be a pass-through storage underneath here. But you do have some storage off the ends. Well, that's cool, kind of baskets. Nice window here, which is also your emergency exit. And then in here, you have your prep for washer and dryer, which you could put a stackable unit or just use this as extra storage if you want. There's a lot to go over on this unit. There's a lot of stuff going on. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. What do you think of the price as well? Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.